Okay, everyone, I hope that uh, interview with myself and Jazz was uh, interesting for you to finish up on uh, chapter five, section five, which was around energy. Now we're on to six, which is around explore mission and culture here on the Art of Leadership with myself, Stuart Hayden. Um, we've looked at uh, four different areas so far, so we've actually uh, only got one more to complete, plus uh, our final outro, which uh, throws in a few bonus balls. Um, we've looked at encouraging our followers to follow, establish values for leadership to create form. We looked at the narrative coach and how we enabled that, so evaluating productivity and energy sources was our last stop um, before we got here. And now we're going to explore mission and culture. So we're certainly at the top of the tree now. This is really where we're definitely, definitely taking other people with us as leaders, as coaches, and potentially we're doing that on quite a wide scale because this is about mission and culture. This might be about ourselves, but it might be also about teams and even organizations or, or wider communities. So that's uh, our landing point for this one. Um, we've got a map to work with, so many maps I know, but um, what I want you to do is kind of use these maps, tear them up, consider them, and use them in your own way. And again, remember with the maps, there's choice to be made. It's not one, two, three, four, five. It's just a system. It's just a, a way that you can approach this map. So the map we've got here is around on the left-hand side, we've got context, which I'll talk about in a second, which is organization, team, or individual. And across the top then, we've got about um, maturity of culture. Is that culture um, mature enough to know what the desired state is? Is the culture mature enough to start doing it? And is it mature, mature enough to start being um, that way? So um, we'll talk about that one, use this map in um, quite some depth, um, even in this um, kind of short uh, introduction session to uh, mission and culture. So uh, Brockman, John Brockman said this well, and he, he said that uh, it is critical when you think of networks to think about their dynamics. A lot of times people fail to understand networks because they focus on their statics. They think about the, the typology, they think about the architecture of the network. And that was by Brockman. So the reason I mention this is because things change. Culture and mission moves about. It's dynamic and not static. And the map that we used and looked at earlier, we'll use later on, gives us a chance to really understand that and start to plot and plan and assess and evaluate what we can be doing to, in order to create culture. That's essentially what this section is all about. How do we create a culture? What is that culture? Is that a coaching culture? Is it a leadership culture? Is it some of the things I've talked about, like an authentic culture? Is it a culture of customer service? Is it a culture of integrity? And what is that desired culture? And once you've got that, then you can think about how you get there. Then you need the map, you see, because the map will help you navigate tricky waters, you'll navigate difficult times. And think about maps. How many of you have got a smartphone with a map somewhere pretty much in the front page? We use maps all the time in what we do. Um, how many of you put a map up on the wall? Probably quite a few of you. How many of you put a process or flowchart on the wall? Maybe, but not quite as enthusing or resonant. So that's why I want to think about these maps and their dynamics and what moves around. Let's just describe the map in a bit more detail. We've already sort of seen it. We're going to work with it quite a lot. So the dynamics themselves are the culture is found in three contexts. Individual, team, and organization. Now, the reason I mention that is a lot of work around culture just looks at organization culture and mission, which is fine. What we also need is team and individual because individuals can forge their own culture. You're doing that here. You're forging your own culture as, as a leader, as a coach. That's what I've been calling on the whole way about your identity. What is your culture as a leader? What is your culture as a coach? Teams, we can do that just with one other person, a small group. It doesn't take a long time to change the culture in a team, does it? We talked about your energy, law of attraction and duality and what you choose and what you're going to bring, all that good stuff. It doesn't take a long time. Organization, yes, more complex, longer to turn around that tank. You know, it takes a, a longer time to, to change and recourse and look where your navigation is going. So the reason I mentioned that is you can all do something about individual culture. Yes, you can step into team culture and yes, you can step into organization culture as well. And you'll know which context is important to you. Maybe don't focus on the organization right now, or even the team, just focus on yourself. Or maybe right now the team or organization is the, the priority. The other thing to note is culture has three levels of maturity. So if you're gonna go for a certain um, approach around customer service, don't expect everything overnight. And actually your intention and the map shouldn't be everything overnight. You wouldn't climb Everest without going through a few base camps, would you? So you need to know what you're doing. You need to know what the desired state is. So if it's customer service, what's the desired state? Is there a model you're using? Is there an approach you're using? What is the desired state? Two, get people doing it, trying it out, changing it, evolving it, chopping and changing. But get people doing it. And finally, as we talked about a lot, is who are you being? You want to get to that point where that culture is pretty natural to the organization, natural to people around them.
So it's being, it's done everywhere. It's done internally, externally, it's done in the canteen, it's done on the phone, it's done in the email. Okay, so those are the dynamics. We're gonna play with these a lot more, so they will all become nice and clear for us. Um, in terms of what you end up populating, what's in your network, could be a couple of things. Um, so you've got your three areas and three levels of maturity that comprise of habitats and habits. So habitats is our natural home or environment, and a habit is settled or a regular tendency. So I said earlier, if you're going to have a, uh, a culture of customer service, fantastic customer service, whatever you want to call it, a habitat might be a training course where people go to learn and develop their customer service skills. The habitat might be a model of theory that you pin your hopes to. The habit is how you put it into practice. They move around a lot more, they're a lot more dynamic. So the habit is the habit of asking the customer a question. The habit is the habit of uh, listening to the, uh, the customer. The habit is establishing their needs, or whatever it might be, okay? So just bear that in mind. Some things are quite fixed and some things are quite fluid and dynamic. So if you think of a map, I'm in London right now, if you think of a map of London, you've got um, some of the habitats would be um, the shopping areas, you know, some of the big um, shopping areas that would be a habitat. You know, there's Harrods, there's Harvey Nichols, there's where I used to work, get it in third, Selfridges, you know, they're habitats. They are well-established buildings and roads and car parks and everything else. But the habit there is a habit of shopping, of entertainment, of eating, of drinking. Now the thing with that is that aforementioned retailers don't move around too much, but the habits do. Because you can still eat and drink and shop in the West End where you're more likely to be busy in the habitat of a theatre, isn't it? So they move around. So just think about that, it is both, and you do need both in there. So if you're going to create a culture of customer service, you need to create some physical habitats, a customer service academy, customer service champions, those kind of things, as well as the habits, what the desired habits. If you've got both, you're in good shape. If you've got one or the other, you're probably going to be uh, missing a trick. So that's your network. That's what we're going to be looking at in the next section. What we're going to be doing shortly now is be looking at uh, culture mapping. So I'm actually going to take you through an example where actually you map the culture based on an organization. There's going to be a coaching case study for you to look at. But the main takeaway from this is you've got to think about as leader, as coach, getting to the point where you're taking other people with you to the point that you can create a mission and culture at an individual for yourself, team and organization level. And just think about what you're finding there. Where is your focus? Is it individual team level or organization level? And... Are you looking at knowing, doing, or being as a level of maturity? I'm with one organization at the moment that's just focusing on knowing. It's just getting to know what it's about coaching, what coaching is. Don't focus yet on doing it or being it. That's further down the line. They want to create timelines and project plans. Let's just get individuals, teams, and organization knowing what coaching is. That is your start of the 10. Then you can shift perhaps your energy to some team examples where we want to get people doing it or whatever might work. Okay, so that's that. Um, what we're going to look at now is culture mapping and then we can kind of uh, use that for some examples that you might be facing at the moment.